Hello, Princess on a Pillow here. I am here to do a review on Married at First Sight. Well, I'm doing a review slash recap with my opinion on Married at First Sight, season 14, episode 9. Is it episode 9? Episode 9. It's titled, Is Love on the Table with a Question Mark? Okay, so let's get started. So... The first couple is Katina and Elijah One. Okay, we see Katina, and I guess she's outside of a grocery store, and she says she's buying food for herself and her husband. Um, she is basically saying that she doesn't know um, what to buy for Elijah One. I don't understand that. You don't have to guess what to buy for him. All you gotta do is ask him what he wants, write down the list, and buy it. What do you mean she doesn't know what to buy for her husband? What does he like? <sighs> um, and if she really doesn't know how to cook, all she needs to do is um look up some recipes on um YouTube. She can even just type in simple breakfast ideas, simple lunch ideas, simple dinner ideas, and <laughs> YouTube would tell her step by step what exactly she needs, the ingredients she needs, and exactly how to do it. Show you exactly. How. It's not rocket science, Katina. If you don't know how to cook, you can easily teach yourself how to cook, babe. It's easy. Okay, the next scene we see is Katina and Elijah one. They're at their apartment. And apparently they had an argument the day before, which was, I think, the house um warming. Um day and then they show us audio of what happened and all we hear is elijah go elijah one going off on katina um he said she is worried about things that doesn't mean shit to him what <laughs> so what what's the big deal he said she can't do the things he asked her to do. What are you asking her to do that she doesn't want to do? And if she doesn't want to do them, she don't have to do it. If you say, go get me a cup of water or a glass of water and she don't want to do it, then she don't have to do it. Say no. And then you go get your own glass of water. What are you talking about, Elijah One? Um. So now we see him in the present time and he has calmed down and he's talking to her. Um, and he asked her, what's her definition of a wife? And she says, um, a support system, a partner. And you can tell Elijah when he's pissed. He said, um, he said, I think he said she's pissed because he wouldn't, she wouldn't clean up after the party, the housewarming party. Instead, she went to bed and he had to sweep the floor. You can't sweep floors, um, Elijah one. I mean, you live there too. Why you can't sweep up? He's pissed at that. That she went to bed and he had to clean up after the housewarming party. Is that anything to be pissed about? I don't think so. Did she cheat on you? Did she lie from? Did she lie to you? Did she steal um from you? I mean, what is she doing that's so bad? She was tired. She went to bed and you sweep. You swept up. So what? Oh my gosh. Poor baby Elijah one had to sweep up. Anyway, the next scene, um, the so-called expert, and I'm not a fan of these experts, they gave all the couples questions to ask each other. So Katina asks Elijah one, what does it take him? What does it take for him to fall in love? Elijah one says devotion, commitments, and loyalty is what it takes for him to fall in love. Now, I don't understand this. If you were to ask me that question, I would say, I don't know. Because you fall in love before commitment. You fall in love before devotion, don't you? You fall in love before loyalty. It's after you fall in love and then you get married, then you see all the, you see a commitment, a devotion, and loyalty, right? Am I wrong? Say I meet somebody right now, today. And we start dating. And I fall in love with this person. Is it, am I in love with them because they're committed to me? No. 
am I in love with them because they're devoted to me? No, I'm in love with them because of the way I feel when I'm around them. I feel good. I feel happy. I enjoy being with this person. It's not because of devotion and commitment. Anywho. Anyway, Katina said for her, she would fall in love with someone who supports her. I don't think they understand what what the question is. The question is, what does it take to for you to fall in love? It really doesn't... It, I don't know. I don't like this question. What does it take for you to fall in love? It's a feeling. It's not a um a um a verb. Somebody has to be committed to you for you to fall in love with them. Somebody has to be devoted for you, devoted to you for you to fall in love with them. No. Anywho, I don't know. She says someone who is loyal and understanding. That's what Katina says. Someone who is patient. A person who can be her best friend. So somebody got to be your best friend before you fall in love with them. No, I don't think they understand what the question is. What does it take for you to fall in love? I don't think they understand. They understand it. I don't know. Um, and then Katina told um Elijah one that she is more guarded than she comes than she comes off. And he says, "Yeah, I know." He says because you don't cry. And she says she cries, but she cries in private. <laughs> and she told him that her ex boyfriend. Won't was abusive to her and when she cried he would um talk down to her so she doesn't let anybody see her cry so elijah one told her it's okay to cry so then katina asked him if he thinks he's beginning to fall in love and he told her that it would he would um that he would let her answer the question first i don't know why he did that why didn't he just answer the question but, okay, Katina said um, what it would take for her to, um, what was the question? The question was if he's beginning to fall in love. So she says um, she's not beginning to fall in love, It's um, but there's potential for falling in love. That's not true. A couple of episodes ago when they were on their honeymoon, she did a confession and she said, I'm in love, I'm in love. So she's already in love with him. And he jokes around, but he says, he, he you know, he, he thinks that she is in love with him. And she already said that she was. She already told the camera two episodes ago that she was in love with him. Um, so Elijah one told her he liked her, but falling in love is off the table for him. Now, he could have said that a better way. That was so insensitive and hurtful. He did not have to hurt her like that. He should have said, right now, no, but I think some things need to change for me to fall in love with you or something like that. But he told her it was off the table. Off the table means it's never going to happen. That's what off the table means. But I hear through the grapevine that they're together. So, anywho, in his confessional, Elijah once said he doesn't know enough about Katina to say the word love. So, um, Elijah one basically told Katina that in order for him to fall in love with her, the connection has to grow. So then say that. Don't say it's off the table. You say it's off the table, then you say a connection has to grow. You're saying two different things there. Anywho, he says standards have to be met. The nerve. So in order for him to fall in love with her, she has to meet his standards. Because right now, she doesn't. That's what he's saying. He's trying to say she's just not up to par to be his wife. He says, apply what I say that affects me. So he wants her to, basically, he's trying to say, do what I tell you to do. He said, this is what has to happen for my love to grow. As long as she do what he tells her to do. And Katina basically says, okay. Like I said, I heard through the grapevine that they're together. And wasn't it his brother that told her that Elijah one is going to try to mold you into the woman he wants you to be? And that's exactly what he's doing. So we'll hear more about them later. Right now we go to um, Stephen and Noy. Um, so the couple has a task to plan special dates. So Noy told Steve to meet her in the park and she has him on a scavenger hunt. It's a, sca a scavenger hunt to find her. And Steve loves it. And he, um, this couple, Steve and Noah, I think they're boring. The only time they're interesting is when they're fighting or arguing. 
So he finds her and they hug and kiss and they take a Polaroid picture of themselves. The next scene, um, the expert, you know, gave them a topic to discuss. The same thing for Elijah that Elijah one and um Katina discussed. Um, Steve asked Noy if she has been in love before, and Noy said yes, once. Steve said he has been in love several times. Steve said he has had five serious relationships, and all of the in all those five relationships, he was in love. So Noy is wondering, well, how come you fell in love with them, but you can't fall in love with me? I don't know why she's trying to rush it for this man to fall in love with her. So Steve asks Noy, what does it take for her to fall in love? And Noy basically says that when someone is there for her through hard times, then she can fall in love with them. That doesn't make sense. So you have to be going through hard times for someone to fall in love with you? They're not understanding the question, I don't think. What does it take for you to fall in love? It's a feeling. It's not a verb. It's not an action. Someone being there for you during hard times, that's how you fall in love? So how many hard times did you have? I mean, it doesn't make sense. It's a feeling. It's not a verb or a noun. Anywho. Steve said when he treats someone, he, when he trusts someone and builds a bond with them, then he falls in love with them. Hmm. Okay, Noah basically asked him if it's too soon for him to feel that way about her. And he said he's getting closer to the feeling. Noah told him that she doesn't have time to waste. If she feels like she's falling in love, then she's going to let that person know. Which means she don't have time to waste. What's her hurry? <laughs> she says she don't have time to waste. I don't even think she cares about... if I don't even think she cares if he loves her. She just wants to hear him say, I love you. She don't even care if he actually loves her. Anyway, now we're on to Mark and Lindsay. So we see Mark and Lindsay and they're, they're at their apartment. And Lindsay is not happy with Mark. She she wants him to show her that he cares about her. And I would like him to show that too because at the bowling alley, he just did not have her back. He's pissed off at her because she said something to Katina for rolling her eyes. You're mad at her for that reason? Instead of consoling her and saying, you know, baby, don't worry about her rolling her eyes. It's okay. Come on, let's go on over here and have some french fries or something. Just, instead, he's pissed at her for saying something. To Katina for rolling her eyes. What? Anyway, Mark. Yeah, she said she would like him to show that he cares about her. And then she said, basically, I'm just sitting around here waiting for the next argument. So they're eating and barely talking to each other. And then Mark asks Lindsay if she felt like she was out of line at the bowling alley. How was she out of line? Katina rolled her eyes and she said, why are you rolling your eyes? What's out of line about that? She asked Katina a question. Katina said, don't bother me. Leave me alone. And she left Katina alone. There was no argument. There was no tiff. That was the end of that. So what is his problem? So he wants to know if she was out of line. She was out of line with him, but she wasn't out of line with Katina. I think they were both out of line with each other. I think Lindsay was out of line when she told him to go home to his mother. She was out of line with that. And she was out of line when she started putting down what he did for a living and how much he earned yearly. She was out of line for that. And she was out of line when she talked about it, him, you know, him not pleasing her in bed. You know, she was out of line with that one too. Mark was out of line when he told her to go have another beer. Like he was insinuating that she was drunk. She was not drunk. Because she said to him, what's wrong with you? Are you okay? That's all she said to him. And he goes, no, I'm not okay. I didn't like what you did. But she wasn't drunk. I watched somebody else's video and they said, he went drunk. She was not drunk. She wasn't stumbling. She wasn't slurring her words. She wasn't drunk. She had a beer. Her beer was, he wasn't even finished. The damn cup was still full. And who gets drunk off of one beer? She wasn't drunk. Ever since she was drunk at the wedding or was tipsy at the wedding, everybody think, no, Lindsay's a drunk. I hate when people do that, you know? Anywho, yeah, he was out of line for telling her to go have another beer, insinuating that she was drunk. And he was out of line for starting sh for talking shit about her to Chris. When they were sitting on the steps and he was talking shit about her, saying how nobody likes her. She can't be my wife. I can't be married to that. 
He was out of line when he was talking that shit about her to Chris. He was out of line then. So um, uh, Lindsay told Mark that um, she didn't feel like she was out of line, but she was. So was he. She told him that he was a Debbie Downer. <laughs> she told him that he's always talking about I, 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 I. And that's true. He's talking about, he's always saying, I don't like what you did. I don't like what you said. I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't like when you say this. I don't like when you say that. I'm uncomfortable. You make me feel uncomfortable. He's always saying, me, me, I, I, me. Mark only cares about Mark. He's a big, fat, stinking baby who needs a pacifier. Okay, Lindsay asks Mark, when is he going to give her kindness? And I would like to know the same thing. When is he going to show her some kindness? When? Anyway, she told him that she was very upset with him. And he said, same. That means I'm upset with you too. But you started it, Mark. You started the whole thing. Nothing happened with him, with her and Katina. They said a couple of words to each other, and that was the end of it. And then you had to go say, I didn't like it when you said this. And I didn't. It didn't have to go there, but Mark, you took it there. And Lindsay told him that his life is in chaos, and he's always complaining. And that's true. Lost his apartment, had bed bugs, had to put, I don't know what happened to his bed and his couch. You don't know what happened to that landlord wanted to kick him out, or raise the rent, or get his, change his lease, or. His life is in chaos, and he's always bitching about something. And he's shocked that she said it. goes, me? Yes, you. You're always complaining. In her confessional, Lindsay said Mark is too, Mark is so focused on how things are affecting him that he's not realizing how things are affecting her, which is true. It's true. When something happens, he needs to show her some type of support he shows her no support when something happens with her and somebody else show her some kind of support nothing she gets nothing from him and well Lindsay said from now on she's putting herself first you know what i say i say always put yourself first and what's left over maybe he'll get some of that that's what i say always put yourself first always do that why not Take care of yourself first. How are you going to take care of him first and then just let yourself go? No, he don't even care about you. He ain't taking care of you. And whatever you do, he still bitch about that. Mm -mm. So they argue back and forth. Then Lizzie asked him, what does he like about her? And Mark told Lizzie that she has a loving person buried inside of her. What? She told him that that was insulting and that was a dick. And it was insulting. How dare you? Then he says a whole bunch of stuff. I don't even know what the hell he's talking about. Then he says something about they like each other, which is a lie. You don't like her. He doesn't like her. He said their problem is that they don't communicate well with each other. That's not their problem. Lisa doesn't agree with that and I don't either. Anyway, the next scene is we see Mark and Lindsay getting, get, they're getting along in this scene. And Mark asks Lindsay if she's been in love. They got to ask the question that expert gave them to ask. And she said, yes, she's had different versions of love. And that's, that's a good thing. That's a good answer because you do have different versions of love. She said she had a high school love and she, has a, she had a love in college. And that's true. When you fall in love with people in high school, people don't think it's love. They think it's an infatuation or a crush. But why isn't it love? You're too young to love somebody when you're in high school? No, I don't think so. But yeah, she said she had a um, different version of love. One was a high school love and one was a love in college. Mark said he has been in love. He has been in love. And he... He babbles on about Hanging on to feelings for his last love. And I'm trying to think of what is he trying to say? Is he still in love with the last person he was um, with? And then Lindsay said, she told him that it's, an, it's concerning because it sounds like he can't move on from his last love. You know? And that's what it sounds like to me. I wonder if Mark is still in love with his, with his ex. So Lindsay 
tells Mark that she doesn't recycle. If a relationship doesn't work out once, why would it work out twice is what she said. I kind of agree with that and I kind of don't agree with that. If you're in a relationship with someone and you break up and a couple of years later, that person might might have matured, might have changed. You might have matured, might have changed. And then a relationship can work. You know, some people uh, recycle love and find, you know, and manage to stay together. So I kind of agree with that and I kind of don't agree with it. She asked him, what does it take? For him to fall in love. Mark said it takes time for him to fall in love. He said it takes time to build a foundation. It takes time and patience. Lindsay says for her to fall in love, which this was a dig at Mark. She said for her to fall in love with somebody, they need to be present. Be consistent and show they care. That's, Mark doesn't do that. So she's putting a, taking a dig at him. She says, someone who doesn't walk away, that's Mark. Someone who doesn't withdraw, that's Mark. Someone who doesn't abandon a moment, that's Mark. Somebody who doesn't shy away from conflict, that's Mark. Someone who is always going to show up and stand up, that's Mark. He doesn't show up, he doesn't stand up for her. He just go along with the crowd. She said, when she... Um, doesn't get that, then she quickly checks out. And of course, we know she's talking about Mark because all those things she mentioned, that's what Mark does. Okay, Lindsay asked Mark if he think he is beginning to fall in love. He said he think that it's a possibility for it to happen. He said he think it needs more time to develop. Lindsay says if she was asked that question one or two weeks ago, she would have said yes, that she um think it is possible for love to happen. But now it's 11, um, it's been 11 days and it's been tough for her, she said. She said she would need him to make time for her. And choose to make her a priority. That's what she said. Next up, we have Michael and Jasmina. So Michael sets up a picnic for him and Jasmina and her little doggy. Michael knows how much her dogs mean to her. So he gets her a dog basket of gifts for her dog. Which was so sweet. It was so nice. So um, Michael tries to bond with the dog and then he asks Jasmina how should he communicate with her during times when he is unhappy about a situation. And Jasmina, she had an attitude she, she, with, with, with him. She says, just talk to me, that's all. All you have to do is talk to me. And um, she said it with a really, really stink attitude. And if he was to, to talk to her like that, she wouldn't like it. And I could see that Michael was getting annoyed with the way she was saying. She said, don't say this and don't say that. Just come, on, just come and talk to me. That's all you have to do is talk to me. So Michael tried to tell her that they both had a tone that time that they disagreed when they were on their, their honeymoon. And I'm be starting to believe it now. They both had a tone. Well, Jasmina told him, she said, basically, she told him, like, when your tone changed, I matched your tone. You know, I my tone, I um, elevated my tone to match your tone, is what she's saying. And she, and she told him that he should learn how to read the room and know how, you know, how to talk to somebody. And she told that she tells him that's, that's basic, um, that's basic knowledge of how to communicate. And she had an attitude when she was telling him this. She was giving off hypocrite and controlling vibes to me. And then they were talking and she told him, um, what did she tell him? She, she tell him to, to calm down, calm down. And he wasn't even calmed up. And when she told him to calm down, calm down. It's like she can talk to him any kind of way, but he has to watch his tone. He has to watch which words he use. He has to watch his body language. I mean... Poor Michael, he was frustrating, and I, I could feel his frustration. 
Anyway, the next scene, Jasmina and Michael, they were in the apartment eating, and Michael asked, talk, tells Jasmina that it was the anniversary of his brother's death. And Jasmina feels good that Michael opened up to her and told her that. So they have to ask each other a love question. Michael asks Jasmina um, if she has been in love before, and she says three times and a possible. He asks her what made it feel like love. Now, I like that question. What made it feel like love? And she said that um, they met her. Um, she felt it felt like love to her because they treated her right. The person treated her right. They treated her with respect and with friendship. And she was giddy. And Michael said he has been in love one time and a possible. I don't know what this possible crap is. He said his possible was high school. He said he was in love with the the last person he was in a relationship with. And Jasmina asked him, how did he know he was in love? I like these questions. How did you know you were in love? And he said they had a friendship and he knew her and they understood each other. And he said he could be himself with her. Jasmine asked him, what does it take for him to fall in love? I hate this question. What does it take for you to fall in love? You don't know what it takes for you to fall in love. You're... You randomly fall in love with someone you see and start dating someone or you're either friends with someone or even work with someone and you get to know each other and eventually you get a feeling about them that you just enjoy being around them and, you know, you think about them a lot, you like them a lot, you want to see them smile, you, you know, just enjoy being around a person. So that means ask him, what does it take for him to fall in love? Like it, like you can make yourself fall in love. It's what this, this question means to me. It's like you you can make yourself fall in love. He said he has to be vulnerable with the person. Jasmina asked him if he is vulnerable right now, and he said that they they haven't had enough conversations for him to be vulnerable enough. And um, she asked him what is stopping him from having conversation in order to open up and be vulnerable. Mike said um, day one. He made the decision to be vulnerable. And in her confessional, um, Jasmina said he does he has not taken the steps to be vulnerable with her. Anywho, the next scene, the women meet up at a nail salon. And um, Lindsay, they're talking, they're getting pedicures. And Lindsay asks Noi about the message that she posted online. And Noi didn't really go into it. She says, basically... Um, she didn't know, they don't know each other. Her and, um, what do you call him? Steve don't know each other and they're getting to know each other. But then you told him you love them. So how now you're saying you don't know, y'all don't know each other. No, it's ridiculous. Um, anyway, Katina told them that her relationship with Elijah one is up and down. And Katina told the ladies that she is not changing as swiftly as Elijah one wants her to. Why in the world do she have to change for him to fit what he wants? Why does she think that it's okay for her to change to fit what he wants? That's crazy. Noi tells the ladies about Steve's stupid soggy noodle story and how he got upset. And how when they were talking about it, how his voice cracked. And she said, because his voice cracked and he got so emotional when he was talking about her leaving, that she thinks he loves her. Um, and during that scene, when she had left, he was saying how he didn't know where she was. Where else could she have gone but back to her own apartment? That's where she went. I mean, where else could she have gone? And then the ladies, they seem to think that they're all going through the same problems with these men. And that's not true. Let me tell you about these men. Steve's problem is he will not commit. He won't commit to a woman. He won't commit to a job. He won't to commit to, to saying he loves her. He won't commit to a dog. He won't commit to kids. He wants no commitments. He wants to be free. That's what Steve wants. Michael's problem is He's not worldly. Worldly. He doesn't really know much. He's in a cocoon. Um, he's a little sheltered. 
he's reserved. He is a little awkward socially. That's that's uh, Michael's problem. Mark's problem, he's he's selfish. He's self-centered. He's a wimp. Elijah One's problem is he doesn't want a wife. He wants a mother. He wants someone who will cook, clean, wipe his nose, and wipe his ass. That's what Elijah One wants. Anyway, next scene, the men go to this archery game place, and they're shooting each other with these sponge arrows. And that's not my cup of tea. I wouldn't go to a place like that. Afterwards, they sit down to eat and talk. And Mark tells them that his marriage is more work than he thought. He basically basically tells them that he can get along with anyone easily. He gets along, well, easily with anyone but Lindsay. That's what he basically told them. Elijah one tells the men that it's tough. To have to baby Katina. Wow. He basically says she does not have life skills. He tells them she does not go to. He, he tells them that he does not go to sleep with a dirty house. Because she went to sleep and he had to sweep up. That's why he's saying this. He told them that he can't always be there to clean up. Or to guide her into cleaning. He said he works overnight sometimes, and sometimes he works during the day. He says she's home right now. He says what's going to happen when she gets when she goes back to work? He said, how can I get support from my wife? He says his family likes Katina, and if they didn't like her, he would walk away. Wow. I can't believe he said that. Elijah once said he's having a really tough time. He's just having a tough time because he can't get what he wants. He wants her to cook and clean. And she's not cooking and cleaning at the rate that he wants her to do it. Or the, the perfection the way he wants her to do it. He's pissed because he, he's a child. Because he can't get her to do what he wants her to do, he's being a snot, snotty-nosed child. What he needs to do is get a damn cleaning lady who comes in twice a week to clean, to cook and clean. That's all. Problem solved. So Michael tells the guys about his communication uh, problems with Jasmina. He said the new problem is their, um, is them trying to connect on a deeper level. He said he has to open up to her and then maybe she will open up to him. Steve told the guys about his noodle, the noodle gate with Noy. He's so freaking petty. I'm so sick of him. Basically, he said he had to cry to show her how much she hurt him when she ghosted him, when she wouldn't return his text. We need to give um, Steve a pacifier also. Yeah, he's acting like a freaking baby. Next, we see Lindsay and Mark. Lindsay and Mark are at a restaurant, and Mark is finally stepping up to the plate. Lindsay likes sushi, so he takes her to a sushi restaurant. And I was impressed with him. Lindsay is happy. She's impressed. She's surprised. And Mark really stepped up. He tried some of the raw fish. Um, he tried using the chopsticks. He apologized to her. He made promises to her. He sweet-talked her. What happened to Mark? What happened to Crab Baby Mark? Where did he go? What happened to him? <laughs> anyway, next scene, Lindsay um sets up a date at a fun um park that has batting cages and go kart. Mark said it in, in his confessional that the fact that Lindsay remembered that he used to play baseball makes him appreciate and care for her. And he said. He has love for her. And at the batting cage, they look like they're having a ball, which is really, really nice. Next, we see Jasmina and Michael. Jasmina sets up a gym in the apartment for her and Michael. And the stations have three different um, names. One is for communication, one is for interruptions, and one is for vulnerability. And Michael is impressed with her efforts because he knows that she doesn't work out much or at all. 
And while they're stretching, she asks him about his childhood. And he talks about his brother dying. And he got really, really emotional. And Jasmina was there, you know, to understand and support him. And that was really a very, very touching scene. Next, we go to Steve and Noi. Steve sets up a picnic on the beach for himself and Noi. They're celebrating um, their three weeks of marriage. And they talk about their favorite memories. And Steve tells Noi that he, he t actually tells her that he loves her. And I think he's lying. Steve don't love it. No, no, Steve loves Steve. Anyway, Elijah Wan and um Katina. Elijah Wan takes Katina on a cooking date. Where they, they cooked um shrimp. And the shrimp, oh, the shrimp looks so good. Um, and they made salmon. Katina calls salmon semen. She pronounces it semen. Anywho, Elijah Wan is happy. He's freaking happy about the food. The food tastes good. It looks good. He said in his confessional that just because the Katina doesn't go to the club anymore doesn't um, mean she's ready for marriage. He's so judgmental with Katina. He, and he's an insensitive louse. He tells Katina that he is not that... That she's not on the level that he's on. He said he bought his house and he paid off his student lo loans. And she's not at that level with him. He also told her that she didn't apply enough effort at the housewarming. For the housewarming um, party. He said her friends bought the food. And he's just talking down to her. He's, you know, he said that she's not, basically said that she's not woman enough for him. At one point, he even said she wasn't an adult. Because she doesn't know, he claims she doesn't know basic, basic life skills. Because she doesn't cook and clean for him, this is how he's treating her. He said she doesn't have enough life experience to be a wife. He says that's why he's disconnected. He tells her that's why he's disconnected from her. That's why he can't fall in love with her. That's what, that's what he's saying. Because she's not good enough to be his wife. She can't cook and clean. He said he told her he has to be real with her. He has to keep her grounded. He said that when he says yes on this decision day, he needs to know that she can cook and clean without his help. And all Katina does is cry. That's it. That's all she does. My gosh. And I don't understand how she has all this energy for Lindsay. Lindsay say one thing to her and she jumps on Lindsay. But with Elijah one, she just sits there and cry and let him treat her like shit. And you know what? This is why Elijah one does not date black women. Because most black women won't sit there and allow him to disrespect them the way he does her. He got lucky when he got Katina. Okay. This is the end of my review. I will be back next week with another review. Thank you for watching. Princess on a Pillow here. Bye.